as human beings, our function, our personality, our intellect is all derived from brain. And so we think that we're caring for the most important organ in the body. Child neurology is a frustrating field. Kids don't often fit the textbook descriptions of a neurologic problem. And there's 37,000 genes in the human genome. Half of that goes to make your brain or to have your brain function. It tells you how much can go wrong. We have our challenges, but I truly believe that we're at a renaissance in child neurology. The best for our kids with neurologic problems is definitely coming. At Texas Children's Neuroscience Center, we would like to be the ones that improve brain care in kids. All you'll feel afterwards is aching, all muscles, all joints, and especially my gums, my gums from biting my cheeks and things like that. The pain afterwards is not pleasant. Ellie's health story began when she was one year old. She had a generalized seizure that was extremely prolonged. She seized for roughly six and a half hours and they had prepared us to lose Ellie. Ellie went on to have seizures once or twice a week until she was probably 13 years of age. And then things started to get worse. She had seizures four or five times a day. That's when we felt that we had to really search out um, someone who could make a change. And that's when we came to Texas Children's. At the Neuroscience Center at Texas Children's Hospital, we coordinate multiple specialties to treat children with neurologic disorders in a profoundly different way. We've developed expertise in just about every area of child neurology, peripheral nerve, brachial plexus, spinal uh, issues, fetal care, and we champion a multidisciplinary approach. If they can see the, all the specialists that they need to see for their neurologic problem at one time, in one place, that's superior to coming back and forth for multiple visits. We now have one of the larger units in the United States, but it's the people that make the difference. The people who every day have contact with kids that make it a friendly environment. Since there's a family history of a problem, we'll go looking at the MRI just to be sure. Is that okay with you? Okay. The best part is they listen to you as a patient. The way they talk to us, explaining things in simple terms. Ellie was cared for wonderfully, beautifully. And I could stand back as a mother and feel that my daughter was being well taken care of. It really does take a whole army of people to care for children with complicated neurologic problems. And so we have to have just wonderful people that want to do this and do it very, very well. So Brian's been here since Monday, the 11th. And how many total seizures? He has had four. Okay. I feel like I have the best job in the world. One of my favorite hats to wear is actually being a clinician here in the epilepsy monitoring unit where I take care of patients hands-on. I'm involved in mapping their seizures and sometimes other critical cortical functions. And not only do we see the brain electrical activity, we also see the behavioral manifestation of the seizure with the video. Then we're able to figure out where their seizures come from and what the treatment options are. I felt very relieved as a mother that somebody was seeing what I saw on a regular basis. Now we could talk about what we were going to do in the future, and I think that that was a really big turning point for us. I mean, that made such a difference. That one week was just amazing. The care that was there, the people, anything you needed, they took care of you. Our epilepsy monitoring unit was designed as a child-friendly unit. We have the technology available to have children walk around our epilepsy monitoring unit untethered by wires. And we're one of the few epilepsy monitoring units in the country that actually has a playroom. We also use wireless when children need to leave the unit to go for a test. In case they have a seizure, then we're able to download the data once they get back. We recently went from six beds to 12 beds, and this expansion is a critical component of our epilepsy program. 
There are 1.7 million children in Houston. That means there's 8,000 children with intractable epilepsy, 170,000 kids with autism. By the time you add up all the neurologic diagnoses, we're probably talking about 14% of the childhood population. That's why we've tried to grow a service that can meet the demands of our community. For a long time, but now he's symptomatic with the right frontal opercular focal cortical dysplasia. Another critical aspect of the evaluation for a patient is presentation in our epilepsy surgery conference. The surgeons, the epileptologists, the neuropsychologists, as well as the neuroradiologists all weigh in on the potential options, whether they be surgical or medical options. The culture we've tried to develop is really um, horizontal communication. We have a spina bifida program, a spasticity program, an epilepsy program, and everybody on the team gets to contribute. The nurses and nurse practitioners add information. The physicians are more than happy to take advice from each other. A fully functional and engaged team is really the best way to produce any sort of good outcome. Well, I think if you're going to let someone operate on your child's brain, you have to be comfortable with every facet. For me, we had that. People were discussing our daughter as a team. If the whole package had not been there, we would not have gone ahead with it. This concentration of expertise is almost not reproduced anywhere else in the world. Our physicians have developed surgical procedures that were performed at Texas Children's for the first time in the U.S. Laser ablation was championed by the Neuroscience Center at Texas Children's Hospital. Dr. Curry realized that technologies for removal of tumors in the liver could work for brain, and that has led to a revolution in the treatment of epilepsy. You don't feel anything. The worst was waking up with a headache, and that was it. There was no, you know, the recovery process was very quick. We've offered a number of treatments that no other program can do because we developed them. Without research, it's almost impossible to really understand these devastating disorders. The Neurological Research Institute is the home for many physicians and physician scientists who study brain disorders in the hope of one day developing therapies. What we'd really like to do is take what we've learned in the clinic bring it to our research labs, have research done on those particular disorders, and then come back to the patient with a potential treatment for that neurologic problem. Being involved in a research study here makes me feel amazing because it's going to help other kids in the future. The changes that can be made are so astounding. Very few institutions have a laboratory facility like the NRI so close to the clinical operation and actually having integrated clinicians into the projects. Some of us are physician scientists. We were inspired by seeing these patients and this is really important because there is a nuance you learn from seeing the patient that will help you realize that an observation in the lab is really clinically meaningful. Huda Zagbi is one of the leading neuroscience researchers in the world because of what she did for Rett syndrome, something that was totally unknown 10 years ago, is now common knowledge in our profession. That is really quite an accomplishment, and her legacy is being formed on a daily basis by the trainees that are coming out of our clinical training programs because what she did for Rett's, we're gonna have to do for every single disorder that we treat. If you come at any hour into the walls of this institute, there's somebody working here. You can come at two in the morning, you're gonna find students and fellows here. On a weekend, they're here. It's that dedication to work on neurological diseases. As I was younger, I was never able to go out and do something on my own, go walk a dog, go to school, go do anything. The seizures used to be daily. The Texas Children's has given me my life back. I dream of the day when we can bring more and more treatments back to these patients, and that's the real motivation to keep this institute doing the best it can do. The end result, the patients are taken care of better, their outcomes are better, we learn, and we build on what we've learned. Well, the hopes and dreams are easy. 
Um, they're the hopes and dreams of any teenager. She is taking AP Biology this year and um, she's taking honours courses and um, that's something that I never thought would happen. You really have to know your profession very, very well to move it to the next level. And I think that's what we're most proud of here. I truly believe that what we're doing right now is helping form a better future for kids with neurologic problems.